they live more natural. Dairy cows, they're getting all this milk out of them. They don't, they don't last as long. I went to meet him a week or two since, a man talking. He says years ago, calves used to have 10 calves in their life. These, after these modern cows, tiny about four or five, they're old cows. Giving all this milk is putting that much pressure on the cow, so it makes it old. So yeah, I know my cars. I do. I've got a, a classic car, I've got an all day today car, I've got a race car which I take out to track every now and again. And when I do, by the way, I look through the windscreen, not through the driver's side window. This is the TA22 Celica. Now, that's not going to mean much to most people, but I'll explain. Um, about 99, I got my first proper, like I would consider a sports car, and I got a new Celica. When I got that car, I joined a car club, and uh, we got together for meets. And I know car clubs are kind of a bit naff, and people say, oh, you know, but cars is a cool hobby. I don't think there's any such thing as a cool hobby. I think that's an oxymoron or eximoron, however you call it. It's just like stamp collecting, but with a bigger budget and a garage. Flat Rock's kind of semi-famous. Uh, partially because this is where they used to have late night raves. People used to do little car shows up here late at night. All the kids with modified cars come up here and dance around their boot playing nosebleed techno till half ten because they've got school tomorrow. And then uh, it became a notorious gay dogging site. Now what we're going to see here is what's happened at the beach at the moment and that is a lot of wood has turned up. What's the name of that Eastern European game where you get all the sticks and you throw them down and you've got to pick them out without the whole thing collapsing? It's like kaplunk without the marbles. That is the world's biggest game of marble-free kaplunk. OK, so uh, right at the end of Black Rock here, and what you can see there, looking not particularly sexy, is Brighton Marina, the largest reclaimed land area in Europe. And, uh, you know... The people who live there know it as Brighton Marina, but the rest of Brighton secretly know it as Whitehawk Bay, because just up the road there is the kind of place where there's a lot of crime in tracksuits and 15-year-olds slapping their grandchildren because they were bumming fags off someone at their local McDonald's on their birthday. Their 13th consists of eight separate battles, starting in, uh, in, in the end of July and going up to, to mid-November. The New Zealanders are actually involved in two of those battles. They fight at the Battle of Brodcinder on the 4th of October, which is actually a stunning success. And then uh, just over a week later, they fight on the 12th of October, which is anything but a stunning success. In actual fact, it's an, a massacre, our worst day, our bleakest day in New Zealand's military history. The soldiers that came here, their, their motives for joining up were mixed. Uh, some were uh, genuinely convinced that you know this was a moral cause and that they uh, they were fighting on the side of justice and you know the invasion of Belgium, German militarism, and, and so on. And there was also the loyalty to the mother country. You know, uh, England was very much seen as the protecting shield. Um, you know, sometimes they could refer to it as home. England was in, in trouble, and you know it was felt that you know it was natural for New Zealand to actually uh, be part of this and, and go and help.
four new tyres, two new exhausts, um, a new water, but it's, it's a pretty good car. There's a friend who lives in Florida who took it from us and, and, and did the deal uh, eventually, because we just couldn't hang around. And uh, especially him with his daughter and Christmas. And uh, it's recently been for sale on Craigslist for far more than we paid for it in the first place. So it's, we've been ripped off left, right and centre and everyone else has made a lot of money out of that car. When you lose, it's like it's the biggest drug in the world fighting. It's you're either up or you're down. It's like you're putting your soul on the line. It's like when you lose, someone's taking a piece of your soul.